Hello, this is the second video in our series on write statements and digital collections. Write statements, working with examples. My name is Molly Huber, and I am the Outreach Coordinator for the Minnesota Digital Library, or MDL. Greta Bonneman, the MDL Metadata Librarian, will also be speaking in this tutorial. Sarah Ring, Continuing Education Librarian at Minitex, and Nancy Sims, Copyright Librarian at the University of Minnesota Libraries, spoke in the first recording in this series, Write Statements, and Introduction. In the course of this video, we will be providing an introduction to the Write Statement Workflow document, followed by a walkthrough of the five most commonly used Write Statements paired with examples from Minnesota Reflections. This will be followed by some suggestions of where to find additional Write Statement related resources as well as contact information for our team. If you seek detailed information on the individual Write Statements and their meaning, please watch Write Statements, an introduction. MDL's previous Writes work relied on our partner organizations to create their own unique statements about Writes determination. However, the adoption of standardized write statements can provide many advantages. Four of the most important reasons to adopt the standardized write statements include, one, standardized write statements make it easier for organizations to communicate with the public about rights and write status. Two, use of standardized statements removes some of the guesswork when assigning rights. Three, it creates an established set of statements, which keeps us all on the same page. Four, using write statements helps our users understand what they can do with digital content. To assist in assigning rights, our team has created a Rights Review Decision Workflow document shown here. This document walks you through the questions you need to answer in order to arrive at an accurate rights determination. The document is a decision tree. Start at the top to determine if your item is a published document, an unpublished document, or a government document. After establishing the type of document you have, you can start to answer the questions in the tree. Each question requires a yes or no answer, and some questions will lead you to other questions. The answer to these questions will lead to a rights determination. In some cases, you may be faced with more than one conclusion, or you will be directed to find more information or conduct additional research before making that determination. Note that this document is not legal advice. It is meant as a guide to help you make your own determinations. Now we will go through some examples using item records from Minnesota Reflections. There are seven statements we will be talking about today, but we will only be giving examples for five of them, the ones that can be used with confidence. The other two have only limited applications, so we will discuss them, but they should be used sparingly and with caution. So let's begin. Greta is going to join me, and together we're going to walk through the examples. Thanks, Molly. This is Greta Bonneman, and I am the Metadata Librarian for the Minnesota Digital Library. Let's start with the review of the five statements you can use with confidence and will probably be using the most. The five statements are, one, in copyright, two, in copyright, rights holders unlocatable or unidentifiable, three, no copyright United States, four, no known copyright, and finally, copyright undetermined. First up is in copyright. You can use this statement for works that are still under copyright. It is used when, after conducting a reasonable amount of research, you have determined that the item is still in copyright, that someone owns the rights. It may or may not be your organization, but it is most important to acknowledge that the ownership exists regardless of who owns it. An important factor to remember when designating something in copyright is that it does not mean it cannot be shared in a digital collection. The fair use exemption covers a number of educational and non-commercial uses and applications. So here is an example of an item that is in copyright. Molly and I will now walk through the questions together and demonstrate how we arrived at that determination. Follow along by looking at the rights review workflow. First, let's review what we're looking at. It's a black and white photograph taken by Edwin Nelson. This photograph shows passengers boarding a streetcar in Minneapolis in 1954. The image comes from the Minnesota Streetcar Museum. Beginning at the top of the workflow document, let's first determine if the item is a government document or a published or unpublished work. So Molly, what do you think? It's an unpublished work. Was it created before 1899? No. Who was the creator? The creator was Edwin Nelson, who was a private individual. Does Edwin have a known death date? No, not to us. Was the work created before 1949? No. So what's our rights determination? With those facts, our right determination is that this work is in copyright. 
Great, so let's go on to our next write statement. This statement can be used for an item that has been identified as in copyright, but for which no rights holder or holders have been identified or located after a reasonable amount of investigation. This right statement should only be used if the data provider is reasonably sure that the work is in copyright. So let's take a look at our second example. The second example is the 1914 diary of Florence C. Stork. She lived in Minnesota from the time of her birth in 1877 until her death in 1982. This diary is from the Rockford Area Historical Society. This example has a few more nuances than the first example, so again, let's work through the questions. Now Molly, is this item a government document? No. Is it published? It is not. When was it created? Was it created prior to 1899? No, it was created in 1914. Is the creator's death date after 1948? Yes, it was 1982. And this is a great time to mention that the copyright term for unpublished works is the life of the author or creator plus 70 years from their death date. So Molly, what is the rights determination? The rights determination is in copyright for this diary. Or an alternate determination with more research would be in copyright, rights holder unlocatable or unidentifiable. We don't know if Florence has any living descendants and they would be the ones who inherited her rights. Thank you. So let's go on to our next rights statement. We're now gonna talk about no copyright United States. This statement should be used for items that you, as the organization making the items available, have determined are free of copyright under the laws of the United States. Using this statement implies that you have done some investigation to determine the status of the materials and that you're fairly certain there is no copyright under United States laws. Let's take a look at our next photograph. This example is a black and white photograph of some girls sitting on a porch with a dog in Springfield, Minnesota. The image was created by the Reverend Geminer, who was born in 1847 and died in 1913. This image was taken sometime in the years before his death, and this image comes to us from the collection of St. Raphael Catholic Church. Okay, so let's review the questions. Is the item a government document, published, or unpublished work? It's an unpublished work. Do we have a known creator? Yes, we do. Do we know the creator's death date? We do. It's 1913. Is that death date before 1949? Yes. So, Molly, what's our rights determination? Our rights determination is that this photograph has no copyright in the United States. Terrific. Here is the second example of the use of no copyright United States. This time we are looking at a government document. This is an early Minnesota document called The Rise and Progress of Minnesota Territory. It was edited by C.L. Emerson for the Territory of Minnesota in 1855. This item comes to us from the Stillwater Public Library. So Molly, reviewing the questions, is the item a government document? Yes. Was it created by the U.S. federal government? No, it was not. Was it created by a state or local government? It was because the territorial government is the equivalent of state government. Is it published? Yes. When was it published? It was published in 1855. Is that date prior to 1924? It is. So what's our rights determination? Our rights determination is that this document has no copyright in the United States. Thank you. All right. So let's proceed to our next rights statement. Our statement to review is no known copyright. This statement should be used for items for which the copyright status has not been determined conclusively, but that you have reasonable cause to believe that the work is not covered by copyright or related rights anymore. No known copyright implies you have done some investigation to determine the right status of the materials and that you think it is likely that there is no copyright, but you cannot make the determination for certain because you are missing some key pieces of information. The item we are looking at is a brochure from Camp Minogen relating information on their canoeing and backpacking programs for young men and young women. It was created sometime in the late 1960s or early 1970s by the Minneapolis YMCA. This item is held by the University of Minnesota Library's Couts Family YMCA archives. So Molly, let's review the question. Is this item a government document, 
or a published or unpublished work? It's published. When was it published? It was published somewhere in the range of 1969 to 1975. Does the work bear a copyright statement? It does not. If not, was it published between 1924 and 1977? Yes, it was. So, what do we think the rights determination is? The rights determination would be no known copyright, or as an alternative determination, you could also say no copyright United States. Great, thank you. So let's go on to our next rights statement, which is copyright undetermined. This rights statement should be used for items for which the copyright status is unknown and for which the organization has undertaken an effort to determine the copyright status of the underlying work. Typically, this rights statement is used when the organization is missing key facts essential to making an accurate copyright status determination. Key missing information could include the date of publication, the author's death, missing pages that may have had a copyright notice, or the inability to determine whether a work is published. Use this statement when you have researched a work's copyright status, but you didn't find enough information to assign a rights statement. So let's review an example. What are we looking at? It's an application for permit for repairs to a frame building submitted to the City of Stillwater in July 1925. This permit comes to us from the Stillwater Public Library. So let's take a look at the questions. Is it a government document? It's sort of a government document in the sense that the form was created by someone in city government. However, half of the content was completed by the individual person who filled it out. So was it created by a state or local government? Yes, mostly. And would you say that this is published? It's sort of published in the sense that these permits are publicly available, so anyone could go and see them. However, it was not published in a more formal sense. Okay, so what, do we have a date for when it was created? It was created in 1925. Is that date prior to 1924? No, it isn't. So, looking at all of that information and knowing that some of the information is less than precise, what would you say for a copyright determination? A copyright determination for this type of permit would be copyright undetermined, or you could also use no known copyright. Thank you. We are now going to briefly discuss the two statements that are viable alternatives in a very small number of situations. Again, they should be approached with caution and used sparingly. These two statements are first, public domain mark, and secondly, copyright not evaluated. Many people have heard of the term public domain, but our general understanding of what that term means can be a source of confusion. Public domain only implies when a work is free of all international copyright restrictions, and it should be noted that copyright law varies tremendously from country to country. Unless you are certain the item is free of all international copyright laws, it would be more prudent to use the no copyright United States statement and thereby eliminate any international considerations from your determination. The second statement that should be used with caution is the copyright not evaluated statement. It should only be used for items for which the copyright status is unknown and when you, as the organization, have not undertaken an effort to determine the copyright status of the work. This statement implies that you think you can legally use the work, but you haven't attempted to figure out exactly who owns it. But to some users, it may look like you are saying, we didn't even bother to check if anyone owns this before we started using it. This ambiguity leads us to treat this statement with caution. All right, we have now successfully worked through the seven statements, the five you can use with confidence, and the two you should treat with caution. I am now going to turn things back over to Molly. Hello again. If you would like to build upon the information presented in this video and explore additional resources, you can go to the MDL Right Statement Resources webpage in the Standards and Best Practices section of mndigital.org using the link shown here. The previous installment of our Right Statements introductory video series, Right Statements and Introduction, is there, along with links to handouts such as a downloadable version of the Right Statements Quick Reference and the Rights Review Decision Workflow and other support resources. Information about future training opportunities will be posted there as well. Please contact us with any questions. Thank you.